probably know the story. Bertie and I, uh, no, my wife and I had dinner with Bert and Rosemary at <coughs> what was then Rosemary's house at uh, Fairy Meadow, just near, just out of Wollongong. Um, it was a good dinner, a good night, and they had a big round table that we were eating from, and there were a number of people around the table, and um, inevitably, you know, there are always some people who aren't from the art scene, and they don't always quite know what the questions are to ask, so they find questions which they hope will be sensible. And so this woman, obviously searching for a question, went across the table and said uh, to Bert and me, have you two ever gone in for the Archibald? And we made the usual response at the time, which was, oh God, no, you know, nobody goes in for that. The trustees wouldn't know a good painting if it fell on them. You know, it's, nobody takes it seriously. And um, at that point, maybe Bert had had a wine, glass of wine, one glass more than I did, because he leant across the table and he suddenly said, why don't we? He said, why, why don't we? He said, tell you what, I'll challenge you. You, we'll both go in. You paint me and I'll paint you. And I said, oh, right, oh, Bert, OK. And then I probably forgot all about it, you see. And then a fortnight later, he rang me up and said, well, when do we start? I said, when do we start what? He said, you're going to paint me and I was going to paint you. And I said, oh, all right. <coughs> so, <coughs> so we started painting each other. He drew me, I drew him. He started painting me and I started painting him. <coughs> Pardon me. And I, um, for a long time, I'd been using an image in my drawings and my paintings, which was a flying figure. And the flying figure came about, first of all, oddly enough, because in 68, I'd been in New York for nine months and came back to Australia and I was offered the chance to use Arthur Boyd's property down at uh, um, the Shoalhaven. This was before he'd given it to the nation. There was nobody down there except me living in this wonderful big old stone house and working in Arthur's studio on my own. My wife used to come down at weekends and working in the studio, a big black crow, currawong, used to come down and batter itself against the skylights. Um, I would guess probably the sky was reflected in the skylight. But I thought it was a bit odd because the studio was very small and uh, totally self-enclosed and it was almost like being in a prison. The door wasn't even, didn't even look like a door, it was part of the wall. And I thought there's something odd about this. I'm imprisoned in here and here's this creature who's free to go anywhere he, she wants to go. And it's still, it's trying to batter its way into me. It's a odd idea, you know, a bit stupid. But anyway, I started drawing this this winged creature. Then I went back to Jamboree, to the to our little hut at Jamboree, <coughs> and found that hang gliders were leaping off the off the escarpment above me, and they too reminded me of well winged creatures, um, and it, I thought it was very dangerous. I thought it um, it was more than just jumping off cliffs. It was about taking risks. It was risk taking. Um, it's about risk taking, it's about um, every culture in the world seems to have in its iconography has um, flying creatures. Um, so somehow it becomes a universal symbol. So anyway, my little wingman uh, became about taking risks, it related to Angels, if you wanted to think of that, it related to birds, if you wanted to think of that. And because I didn't, it became it related to Icarus, the story of Icarus, if you wanted to believe that. But I didn't want to give it a particular name. Uh, I didn't want to identify it so that other people knew what it was. So I simply called it Wingman, which didn't mean anything. It was just, to me, it was just Wingman. So when I started painting Bert for, for the Archibald, I thought I would, I, for once, I got a great likeness, just a very good likeness, it was beautiful. And it came off, just sailed off my brushes, I don't know how. Um, and it, uh, I wanted a, an image which 
related to Bert, and I thought, well, if I put the wingman in, it's about taking risks. Now, Bertie was about taking risks. He took risks all his life. He sometimes fell flat on his face, but he, you know, he'd pick himself up and uh, he'd, he'd keep going again. That was about that. So I thought I'll, I'll do that. And this is where it gets really weird, because at that point, when I was just, I painted the little wingman in fairly small, I suddenly, for the first time in my life, I'd never occurred to me before that Bert's name, Flugelman, is a German translation, which means wingman. Now that made the hair stand up at the back of the neck, that really did, that was weird. So I painted the little one out and I painted them in again quite large, so that the wings come right behind Bert, so they either could belong to Bert or they could belong to my wingman. And uh, for once that year, the judges for the Archibald uh, had a total change of heart and for once they made a, an incredibly intelligent, perceptive decision and uh, good for them. I, it wasn't worth as much as it is now, but it was, <laughs> it was a nice thing to win. I think the best comment made about it was uh, made by Terence Maloon, who was the art critic on the Herald in those days. And Terence reviewed the, the Archibald and he said it wasn't so much a portrait of a friend, more it was a portrait of friendship, it was a painting of friendship. And I thought that was a nice thing to say, a very perceptive thing to say. And, um, and how did Bert's portrait of you go? It didn't get into the Archibald. Um, I don't know what happened to it. I have drawn drawings from it somewhere. Um, and Bert was overseas when uh, when it was announced. Uh, so he had learnt, learnt about it, I think, when he was in London. He did say to me once later that he thought he got more publicity out of that win than I ever did. <laughs> Which delighted me too.